Oh, very nervous, very nervous. But um, the time has come. I've done long distance races before. 100 kilometers is the longest I've done. So this is definitely a, a big jump up from that. Eight, seven, six. This is actually the first race or the first thing that I've ever done where I might not be able to finish it. Five, four, three, two, one. I decided to run 240 miles to kind of see what I could do. Which such a, a big race, there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of anticipation, there's a lot of preparation and research. The one thing that I have I've learned so far and from other races that I've done, you know, you can make a plan for a race like this, but the reality is that there is no right plan, things will go wrong. And so you really need to go into the race with that kind of mindset. I got into running through my mum, little nugget of joy that she is. When we were kids, she would go for her morning run four or five days a week. We would ride our bikes alongside her and it was always just this very joyous feeling and being able to share that as a young kid, it set an amazing precedent. When you go somewhere and you just walk around the streets, you don't really actually get to experience a place from where you are. By running, you go much further. You can see lots of other things. Running just opens up that sort of enjoyment of living and life. I don't get that from walking, but I get it from running. So I'm missing not running lots. Now, unfortunately, my mum has a Parkinson's disease. She's still very fit and active, but there's definitely an element for her where she can't do the same level of intensity and exercise that she could do. And now as a father myself, I really want to share that legacy with my kids that that's what their grandma stood for. And so I'll be running for my mum and I'm also raising money for her Parkinson's disease research. 4.20 a.m., about two and a half months out from the race. Today's going to be a 50K run. First one that I've done sort of this distance uh, for a while. Do a little bit more of simulation of what the race was like. There's a total of around 29,000 feet elevation. So that's gonna be in itself quite a challenging element. Lots of going uphill, lots of steep downhill as well. Scrambling over rocks, loose surfaces. While some people think about just running that distance is one thing, it's kind of navigating the terrain as well. The other factor is the climate. Good chance it's gonna get up to 80 or potentially 90 degrees. And then at night time, there's a possibility of snow. Uh, so you really have to prepare for both. Today, part of my training run is sand. A great way to replicate heavy and tired legs. Moab 240, here we come. 48 miles, 1,000 push-ups, 1,000 squats. It's time to go back to bed. I keep thinking about the race. I'm gonna be tired and I'm gonna be hurting, but it's the, it's the emotional and the mental place that I'm gonna to have to go to. I just know that the race is gonna be so long. And it's gonna test me so much. It makes me wonder, like, why am I doing it? But I realize there's so much that I've had to do to overcome, be the person I want to be. And I think when I run, it's like my ultimate freedom. It's my release. The time that I can be in my own head and think about who I am. And the trauma that 
that we can go through as kids, how that always is with us. Just going for a run and crying. I mean, it's so cathartic and it's such a nice release. I used to try not to cry and now when I run, I just let the emotion come on. Whew, there you go. So, I don't even know how many miles I've done, but... 17. 17, 17 miles, 17.3 I think it is. And feeling good, wow, relatively good. Trying to get a nice rhythm, waking the body up. I've got a long way to go, so at the moment it's just maintenance, looking after myself, hydration, lots of food. Well, halfway through the first day, the magnitude of how long I was gonna have to run for, what that would actually feel like, really hit me and day one was by far the worst. It was also the hottest, my whole body was cramping and I really was thinking, am I gonna be able to finish it? 29. Adam. How are we doing? Struggling? What? I need to sleep. Yeah. Fans down the hill, check that in. Way. Yeah. Call it a 10 minute walk. Oh. How are you waiting for it? The heat. I was going to say, the heat's Oh my God. My body shut down. I was like in all sorts. I couldn't even walk. Like I'm like I am now. Yeah. And I was going so slow. The only way I can eat is to chew it. And then have like a big swig of water. Day one, I had intended not to sleep at all on, on night one, and now it was automatically the first thing that sort of changed. I was definitely gonna have a, a rest and then reassess. <laughs> One hour of sleep. Would be nice to have some more, but Gotta get the job done. You're gonna go out hard, Sam. Yeah. Run fast. Ready to go. From that point on, I was able to just break down each section. What is the next goal? Where is the next moment? Each leg, each stage, hour to hour. Sometimes it was minute to minute. The body goes into survival mode. You just keep pushing. Before the race, I was like, oh yeah, I'll think about organizing my life or I'll be creative. When the reality is, once that race starts, it's very hard to be distracted by external thoughts. You're really just thinking about the race. When he's doing exercise, you can see how passionate he is. He's passionate about being the best person he can be. He can't resist that spirit of challenge. It just overwhelms him, he can't say no. Where do you think he gets that from? I'm not like that. Oh, rubbish. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. Certainly in times when it was tough, thoughts of my mum were there and wanting to do her proud and having close people around me to support me and watch me through it. My wife and daughter with some friends gave me a lot of strength and courage to, to keep going. You got this, Daddy. Thank you. <laughs> I need a cut of too. Oh. Uh, uh, see you, you be good for mommy. Yeah. Oh, let's go, let's go. Good luck, boys. We're going into day three, and I feel every bit of mile that I've run so far. You just got some sleep? I got, yeah, massive two hours. Just trying to get some food in. It's kind of hard to keep food down at the moment, but um, managing in with uh, a good deep breath and uh, I'll get this, I'll get this. Growing up as a kid, I unfortunately was exposed to sexual abuse and 
I had learning difficulties, ADD, and so there was this trauma, if you will. It was like, how do I find my voice as a kid? We have this persona that we build up to make us who we think we want to be seen to the rest of the world. And so now when I'm doing these long runs, there's a distinct correlation between the emotion of how I'm feeling, but also the trauma that I experienced as a kid. That emotion comes through to the physical exercise or the running. Across the mile 200, how do you feel? Cold. I kind of like the fact that when I'm running, I know that emotion's gonna come on to me. It just means that I know that there's a cathartic element. I know that there's a therapy element to it. And I know that'll be a big part of how I can get through this race. The first day, Friday, I was enjoying the scenery. And then other days, I was like, oh, I wasn't enjoying it at all. And then today, you realize that this is exactly the sort of place I'd come without a race. So I should just enjoy it for the adventure. Last leg, ready to go. He's run three miles in his life before tonight. Now he's going to do 33 in one go. 38. 38. <laughs> As a young boy, my parents separated early. And so there was a definite bond that was created with my mum. And then knowing her love for running and being fit definitely wore off on me. We ran, like 60% of the time this guy was running. I don't know how he's still running. I'm recognizing in my mum that this avenue or this freedom to be able to do exercise is being slowly taken away from her. So that's where he connects. He knows my Parkinson. I don't try and let it change my life, but it has and it will. And um, he, uh, he recognizes that, how much I miss it. And, and, you know, there's so many things in my body that are breaking down and not right. Um, but he, he just has that simpatico. I'm growing to appreciate what it means to actually be healthy and what longevity means. I realise it's a place of privilege to be able to run. When we're allowed to come over there, I'm going to go to, to, to this and see where you walked and do do some of the walks. I want to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's like... It just absolutely looks beautiful, doesn't yeah. it? Just because of my interest in passion for running all those years has given you that passion as... I maybe think, you know, you've got to back off, but, you know, I was also really proud. Yeah. So that was fantastic. Only at the beginning, I think, Mum. All right. Sleep well. Talk soon again. Bye. Bye. To run that sort of distance is something I really wanted to honour. And the fact that I was able to do it for my mum made it very rewarding.